Comlongan Castle, nestled near the village of Clarencefield in Dumfries and Galloway, Scotland, stands as a testament to medieval architecture and Scottish history. This 15th century fortress has weathered the passage of time, retaining its grandeur and mystique while providing a window into the lives of its ancient inhabitants. The castle's story begins in the late 14th century, when Sir John Murray of Cockpool acquired the lands of Comlongan through his marriage to Marion Carruthers, heiress of the Carruthers family. The construction of Comlongan Castle was likely initiated by their son, Cuthbert Murray, in the early 15th century. Designed as a defensive stronghold, the castle featured a robust rectangular keep, thick walls, and a strategic location atop a rocky outcrop, providing commanding views of the surrounding countryside. One of the most striking features of Comlongon Castle is its Great Hall, which showcases a magnificent stone fireplace and intricately carved wooden beams. This hall served as the heart of the castle, where feasts, gatherings and important meetings took place. The structure's defensive attributes included a portcullis, a drawbridge and numerous arrow slits all designed to repel invaders and protect its inhabitants. Comlongan Castle's history is intertwined with the turbulent events of Scotland's past, including the wars of Scottish independence and the power struggles between rival clans. The Murrays of Cockpool, who owned the castle for several centuries, were staunch supporters of the Crown, playing significant roles in various conflicts and political intrigues. A notable and tragic chapter in the castle's history involves the story of Lady Marion Carruthers. In the 16th century, Lady Marion, a descendant of the original Carruthers family, became embroiled in a dispute over her marriage. She was betrothed to Sir James Douglas, but rumours of mistreatment and her subsequent refusal to marry him led to a prolonged and bitter conflict. According to legend, Lady Marion sought refuge at Comlongan Castle, only to meet a tragic end. She allegedly leapt from one of the castle's towers, falling to her death. Her ghost is said to haunt the castle, her spectral presence adding to the castle's eerie allure. Visitors and staff have reported numerous encounters with Lady Marion's ghost. She is often seen as a shadowy figure wandering the halls, her presence accompanied by a chilling breeze. Some have even claimed to hear her mournful cries echoing through the castle at night. These ghostly encounters have made Comlongan Castle a focal point for paranormal investigators and ghost hunters. Over the centuries, Comlongan Castle underwent various modifications and expansions. In the 19th century, a baronial-style mansion was added to the original structure, blending Victorian elegance with medieval fortification. This fusion of architectural styles created a unique and picturesque appearance, attracting visitors and historians alike. In recent years, Comlongon Castle has been transformed into a luxurious hotel and wedding venue. Its historic charm and romantic ambiance make it a popular destination for couples seeking a fairy tale setting for their special day. Guests can explore the castle's ancient rooms, stroll through its beautifully landscaped gardens, and immerse themselves in the rich history that permeates every stone. The castle's preservation as a heritage site and hotel ensures that its legacy endures allowing future generations to appreciate its historical significance and architectural splendour. Comlongon Castle remains a symbol of Scotland's medieval heritage, a place where the past is ever-present, and the stories of its inhabitants continue to captivate and inspire. In addition to Lady Marion, other spirits are said to haunt Comlongon Castle. Guests have reported seeing a knight in armour, believed to be a former resident or protector of the castle. This ghostly figure is often seen patrolling the grounds, adding to the castle's mystical allure. There have also been sightings of a mysterious woman in green, thought to be another tragic figure from the castle's storied past. The paranormal activity at Comlongon Castle extends beyond visual apparitions. Many guests have experienced unexplained cold spots, sudden drops in temperature that are often associated with ghostly presences. Others have reported hearing strange noises, such as footsteps, whispers, and the clinking of armour, even when no one else is around. In conclusion, Comlongan Castle is not just a relic of the past, but a living monument that bridges centuries of history with the present. Its storied walls, tragic legends, 
and architectural beauty make it a cherished landmark in Scotland's cultural landscape. Whether you are drawn by its historical significance or its paranormal lore, Comlongon Castle offers a captivating and unforgettable experience. This spectral figure, often described as a mysterious woman clad in a flowing green dress, has captivated the imaginations of visitors and paranormal enthusiasts alike. Sightings of the woman in green are frequent, with many reporting encounters in the castle's hallways and gardens. She is often seen gliding silently through the corridors, her presence marked by an eerie, otherworldly glow. Unlike the mournful spirit of Lady Marion Carruthers, the woman in green exudes a sense of calm and melancholy, as if she is forever searching for something lost to time. Legend has it that the woman in green may be the spirit of a noblewoman from the castle's storied past, possibly connected to a tale of unrequited love or tragic loss. Her identity remains shrouded in mystery, adding to the intrigue and mystique of Comlongan Castle. Visitors who encounter her often feel a sudden chill and a profound sense of sadness, as if momentarily stepping back into the castle's turbulent history. The woman in green continues to be a poignant and haunting presence, enriching the castle's ghostly legends. If walls could speak, what would the walls of a haunted hotel castle say? The foreboding ramparts of Scotland's Cumlochan Castle hold countless stories of times past. It seemed to come nearer to me all the time, and there was a clanking noise in the distance. But there was nobody there at all. Seated just over the border from England, Cumlochan Castle once served as a fortress where mercenary soldiers would bring hostages for ransom. prison abounds with reminders of cruel captivity. The most infamous story from Cumlogan's troubled past is that of Marion Carruthers. In the 16th century, Marion's family owned the much sought after Mousewald property, just a few miles from Cumlogan Castle. Marion's father was Sir Simon Carruthers. Sir Simon Carruthers, a bold knight to see, had twa bonny doctors, but nae son had he. In a battle he fought, sae calm and sae brave, from English invaders his country to save. At this particular time, it was very um, common, almost universal in fact, for fathers to arrange the um, uh, marriages of their daughters when they were fairly young. Not far away was a man with a scheme. To gain Simon's lands was James Douglas's dream. It was James Douglas's greed for the coveted Marswald lands that sent young Marion's life spiralling downward. Marriages were um, uh, really an extension of business contracts. Increasing your estate and your wealth was uh, um, uh, the goal of all families at the time. Thinking that by joining the two estates, he would provide Marion with a life of wealth and ease, Simon Carruthers chose James Douglas to wed his beloved daughter. He would not live to know how wrong he was. But sad was the day his twa lassies were told. Their feather was dead. Brave Sir Simon the Bold. James Douglas quickly moved to secure Marion's hand and her family's land. Marion, uh, um, a very forceful woman, decided that she would not go along with this arrangement. Rebellious Marion spurned the idea of her prearranged marriage and sought sanctuary with her uncle at Cumlogan Castle. Black Douglas waxed angry, his temper was sere. He cursed and stamped, and he tore at his hair. But not only did she go against her um, family's wishes, but put herself in great danger, and also annoyed one of the most powerful families within the area. An incredibly dangerous act. Cumlogan Castle became a refuge for Marion, but its walls could not protect her forever. Mary Queen of Scots eventually got involved and uh, issued a royal decree that Marion had to uh, um, uh, follow her father's wishes. 
The Queen's decree was final, and Marion and her lands would soon belong to James Douglas. With full knowledge of Douglas's thirst for vengeance, Marion feared she would soon be crushed under his bitter control. It was the recipe for a tragedy. Not long did she live with grief and despair. Her oppressors in greed had little to care. And on a dark night from Comlongan's grey bower, she leapt to her death from the old lookout tower. The next morning, Marion was declared a suicide. But even in death, she would not be left undisturbed. Her head, arms, and legs were cut off. Then the parts of her body were buried in separate sites around the castle, so that no one could ever find or mourn her grave. Today, many speculate Marion died not by her own hands, but by the hands of a man whose family name had been tarnished by her strong will. I don't think you really have to be a detective to work out that it's almost threw her off the battlements. She would have been dragged struggling and screaming and up uh, um, the spiral staircase to eventually be hurled off the top of the battlements. While the truth behind Marion's suspicious death may never be known, many guests and staff say they are sure her spirit still lingers at Cumlogan. It was when I was on night duty that I experienced the ghost of Cumlogan. During World War II, Cumlogan Castle functioned as an orphanage. Many nurses from this time have said they caught glimpses or felt the presence of Marion's restless spirit. Somebody came and pulled the blankets off my bed one night. I woke up, put the light on, there was nobody there. So I went back down to sleep, it happened again. Each time I laid down and put the light out, somebody took the blankets off my bed. So I left the light on. <laughs> until it was time to get up. I was told I mustn't repeat this to other nurses in case of frightening them. Kamlagan was where Marion sought refuge to avoid her own marriage. Ironically, today many brides are drawn to the castle for a traditional Scottish wedding. There was one particular occasion where a wedding that we were conducting at the castle. The particular lady was getting ready for the wedding. She had a bracelet from a mother who was dead, and uh, a watch from her father who was also dead. Both sentimental pieces mysteriously disappeared just before the ceremony. We went upstairs and stripped the sink, took off the U-bend, and uh, searched the whole room, couldn't find it. After the wedding, she went back upstairs to her room. In the bedside cabinet, she found the bracelet uh, entwined around her father's watch. An eerie reminder of Marion's sad legend still remains on the grounds of Cumlogan Castle, on the very spot she is said to have breathed her last. Very soon after uh, um, uh, um, Marion was declared dead, it was noticed that no grass um, grew in the spot, and still to this day nothing grows in that uh, particular area. Poor Marion, she died for her stoutness of heart. In Douglas's black scheme, she ne'er had a part. But legend says her brave memory still shows, for in the place where she fell, green grass never grows. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, and share to keep fascinating content coming here at Nightmare Nexus.